Hello, Common Good Premium Spirit Club subscribers. Uh, very excited to be tasting through uh, these premium spirit selections with you today. I had a lot of fun uh, selecting them. Uh, I anticipate having a lot of fun trying them. These are some of my favorites within their respective categories. Today, uh, we're gonna be tasting through uh, the tequilas, followed by the rums, followed by the unfinished bourbons, and then finally with the uh, finished cask strength. Uh, bourbon Tennessee uh, whiskeys. So uh, you can go ahead and get them out in that order. Uh, and we're going to begin with the Añejos. Cheers. Okay, so uh, let us begin. Uh, the first three we're going to try in this premium selection of spirits is going to be the Añejo tequilas. If you're not familiar, uh, Añejo means aged. Um, minimum of 12 months, although these three, even though this technically qualifies as an ultra Añejo, which is a uh, relatively modern designation by the government of Mexico for uh, how a uh, aged tequila can be classified. Uh, they represent very different philosophies on uh, how an aged tequila should express itself. So the first Artenome, uh, this is uh, one of my favorite projects. Uh, the the guy who, who owns this, um, he actually petitioned the Mexican government because uh, in, in Mexico, if you want something to qualify as tequila, um, you have to have a specific note, a number that shows where your tequila is being distilled. And uh, so the disadvantage of that, according to this man, uh, is that uh, Highland tequilas, uh, everything else being equal, produce the best Blancos and Lowlands produce the best Anijos. Theoretically, uh, because uh, Highlands are going to be sweeter to start and uh, Lowlands are going to be uh, less sweet. And so you kind of want the, uh, the less sweet ones to interact with the oak and and take on those characteristics without getting overly sweet. Um, and so he had this idea uh, of saying, well, I'd like my own brand, one brand, but different gnomes per different expression. And the government's response to that was like, okay, well, you can do that as long as you put the gnome on the front label. So uh, that is what he did. And um, uh, he selects what he considers to be some of the best distillers at each elevation point. And he'll have his Artino Blanco at a Highland, uh, and then Reposado, and then Añejo. So let's start with this. Um, this is his uh, Añejo for Autonome. I think it's um, uh, gonna hit right about that minimum of 12 months. It's an expression of terroir and provenance, which I love. Uh, so let's smell it together. Remember uh, when you're smelling, uh, especially as we get into the higher proof spirits, but even starting at the lower proof spirits from 80 and above, we try not to uh, swirl it. This isn't wine, right? The ethanols will evaporate, sting your nose. So let's just uh, keep it relatively undisturbed. Stick your nose in there. Uh, keep your mouth open while you smell. And then, uh, and you can smell right, right away what I love about this. I smell agave. I don't just smell oak, it's not overwhelming. I smell uh, a little bit more of a grassy, a little bit more of a grassy lowlands agave flavor, which is what I was hoping for and, and expecting, and, and it is what I smell. I have, they should be mm. So tasting it, smooth, sweet. You got those caramel, very butterscotch driven here. Um, very, very sippable. But then on the exhale, on the very back end, I get a nice peppery note. Uh, it's just like, it's a perfect sippable agave tequila in that sense to me, because I still get a lot of the agave. And then it moves on to really pleasant spice notes. Um, and those like nice caramel butterscotch that you expect in a sipping Añejo tequila. Um, okay, so philosophically, we're taking a, um, a one big step uh, past, um, I think, prototypical Añejo. We're gonna move on to the uh, Tres Barricas, um, or Tres Barriques. Um, this is um, uh, a single batch, is triple cask matured, as you might uh, guess from the three barrels and the name, a uh, really beautiful bottle. Uh, with a nice like leather engraved um, uh, sleeve on it. Uh, the big thing about this is that the three different the casts they're gonna use are going to be American oak like every other Neo tequila, but then also they're gonna use tawny port and ruby port. So in case you're not familiar, tawny port is gonna be those aged ports that give off uh, kind of raisinated notes and uh, ruby port is gonna be more like chocolate notes. Um, so that's what I would expect. American oak is uh, famous for giving vanilla and then you get chocolate and caramel. So should be somewhat of a dessert treat, at least those notes. Capo Azul is the, uh, the base producer for this. This is the brand of uh, Trace Burritos. 
So I'm actually very surprised. The first things I smell when I smell this, I do smell almost that like um, caramel flan. But I'm smelling a lot of, of agave too. On the on the on the palate though, it gets a lot more oak influence. I, I really like how it's expressing um, uh, the agave and like dried sun dried fruits. But then uh, when I'm when I'm tasting it. Get a lot more of that oak flavor. Um, very simple. It almost it almost becomes like a um, a fruit cake uh, as you're tasting it. It's very very pleasant, very nice. Um, still, the agave is present on here. Uh, here we have one of those beautiful bottles of tequila, Grand Mayan. So uh, this is a ceramic, hand painted, beautiful, beautiful bottle. This is a blend of three, four, and five year old um, agave. So. Uh, it, just for those of you at home who aren't as familiar why uh, tequila can get so expensive so quickly, it's not because of the market like a high-end bourbon and the rarity of it. It's really because some agave plants are going to take so long to mature, four to six years to begin with. You're dedicating farmers' plots, plus you're dedicating them their, their, their uh, aging warehouses in Mexico. Uh, you're going to lose so much more yield than you are going to with bourbon. I mean. Take a 15 year old bourbon, you probably lost over 75% of it. Uh, that's about what you lose after three years um, or, or less even uh, in, in, in the Mexican hot climate, so. Okay, so when I smell this blend of three, four, and five, and this is more 12 month, this is, and then finished after that, three, four, and five year. So you, you, you're gonna expect a lot more open. The color already is gonna be much more rich, deep, complex. It's not as expressive on the nose because of that oak influence, but it is just a, a, a rich, rich dessert of a tequila. Very pleasant, a lot of vanilla coming through. Um, a little bit of like Hershey's milk chocolate, um, more than like a dark chocolate candy bar. Very, very visible. All three of these, they're very visible. All three of these, uh, different expressions of what aged tequila can can bring. But we've enjoyed them as much as I have. We're gonna move on to rum next. Rum time. So if you are not a rum fan, hopefully you will be after this. Uh, rum is one of the uh, fastest growing categories, uh, like sought after, appreciated spirits. Um, uh, bourbon has had its day. It still has its day. It will never, I think, really fully pop its bubble. Rum is growing in popularity so fast and, and the styles of varieties are so, so different. And I hope that these three um, selections can demonstrate that to you. So we're going to start off with um, uh, Nissan rum. Rum agricole spelled with an H. Um, this is uh, in Martinique in the French uh, West Indies. Um, uh, agricole rum, unlike uh, other uh, Spanish, uh, English, uh, colonized uh, uh, island rums are going to be 100% uh, sugarcane, nothing else added. Um, uh, not even like uh, uh, caramel coloring, which is going to be true for most rums. Um, the sugar added, um, it's one of the things I love about um, the category so much. Uh, the Elevé Soubois is going to be uh, an expression that's just like uh, rested in oak. And um, this is going to be uh, specifically 18 months old. Um, gives a lot of color just in 18 months, a little bit more than you'd expect if it were like a bourbon, but obviously comes from the climate. Uh, being a French, uh, uh, French West Indies uh, rum, you uh, have what you'd expect, French oak influence. Uh, so you smell and you get immediately on the nose uh, vanilla, tons of vanilla coming through. But then you get some of the more agricole flavors you'd expect. So if you ever had sugar cane juice versus, uh, well, just sugar water. Giant difference, right? It's grassy, it's funky, it's earthy. And I get that on the very, very back. Mm. So as a sip, it, it, it has, uh, it's a light, it's pleasant, even though I've got those like vanilla notes. Uh, it comes that comes across uh, super light on its feet, very easy to drink. It's not something that I need to like uh, put in a sifter and just drink slowly by a fire. It's like it's something that I could have 
like on a sunny 75 spring afternoon. Uh, very uh, uh, pleasant, but, but, but light on its feet, as I said. So um, I'm gonna move to the transcontinental rum line rum. So the, this is a single barrel rum bottle for BC merchants, uh, distilled in a column still in Belize, uh, ages for nine years there, and then it crosses the Atlantic Ocean and ages three years in Europe, then bottled here. So um, maybe not the most environmentally friendly, <laughs> but if the ships are, gonna, ships are gonna make the trip anyway, might as well hitch a ride, right? Look at the color difference already. So 12 years versus uh, 18 months. Uh, Belize uh, is uh, not going to be um, uh, the French influence that you're gonna see there, but, um, and especially then being a column still molasses products as opposed to sugarcane. You would expect so much of this. This is cast strength and natural color too. Two big things that are gonna affect the flavor and color. So uh, while this comes in at uh, 100 proof, 50% alcohol, this is 66% alcohol. All uh, bourbon cast. So what's so pleasant about it is that you get a lot of those natural molasses flavors that you'd expect in molasses distillates. Uh, Goslings might come to mind when you think about like molasses dis distillates. But um, the age on this gives it just a richness. Um, that This is one that you would sip slowly. This is one that you would take your time with. Especially like at, at 100 and 32 proof um, it does not it does not drink like that it drinks like something that's going to be like 100 proof maybe very very nice I, I think you can even get a little bit of solidity in it especially as you exhale you can feel that salt on your tongue very very nice um, and, and then we're going to come to uh, what is probably one of my favorite rums I've ever had uh, this is going to be a single cast collection from Plantation. It's award-winning uh, uh, producer, and uh, this is their 1997 Trinidad. So this is a little bit hard to explain, but it's going to spend 15 and a half years in bourbon casks, uh, followed by uh, six years in Pierre Ferrand cognac casks, so French, uh, and then four months in Kilcolman uh, peated whiskey casks. So that it's a triple cask rum in that way. Uh, but I love the specific specificity in blending. Um, so all in all, you add those years up. Um, it spends a lot of time aging. And I think uh, in an age where whiskey's exploded so much in popularity and you have so many people trying to rush maturation, it ends up uh, manipulating oak or manipulating the product of whiskey into things uh, that don't display a natural depth this has natural depth, unlike um, a lot of craft, anything, craft rum, craft whiskeys. I get a little bit of peat already in here. I definitely get vanilla and chocolate. Raisins. And here, the proof on this is just 90 proof. So it's, it's gonna be, even though the flavors are much richer in here, uh, in depth, uh, going from here to here might have been a mistake for me, just because it's it's uh, uh, it goes down so sharply. But it does actually, I think, help uh, help me understand this as an open, full flavored, rich, almost like sweet tasting. But then that peak comes through at the end. I think that's one of the things I love the most about this rum, is that. Um, I go through that journey of flavors that ends in a nice, like, mellow peat expression. Uh, so, uh, unlike the Pokemon Scotch that uh, uh, the barrel is aged in at the end, uh, it has a very subtle note of peat to it, following those raisins. Uh, so, uh, I, hope, I hope that you enjoy these realms as much as I have. I hope it gives you a little journey of uh, something that can be cask driven, uh, so it can be like very uh, intensely oak Spanish style and then a rum agricole. So we're going to move on to um, the rare bourbons next, followed by the cask strength cask finish. Cheers. We're on to our cask strength barrel proof bourbons. 
Uh, one of my absolute favorites, uh, as far as categories go, this is my, uh, if, if my liver and my life and my mornings could afford it, this would be my daily drinker. Love this stuff so much. I love, uh, uh, the speed at which this forces you to drink it's slow. Um, I love the notes that can come from the oak. I love, uh, uh, these three brands in particular. So, uh, let's just dive right in. So wild Turkey, it's one of those breeds that I feel like is a, uh, breeds brands. That's a little bit of a sleeper. Uh, hit for for me, uh, Wild Turkey has a reputation, I think, of being uh, one of those brands that's more for college kids, but um, I don't think that's true at all. I love uh, all three generations uh, of the Russells and what they bring to the brand and their unique styles. Uh, so here that says Master to Solo Jimmy Russell, you have Bruce and Eddie also. Um, right now with their voices and influence on the brand. This brand didn't, uh, at least Rare Bread, breed this mark, didn't come into being until 1991, right around there. Uh, this is a low rye content, so 13% uh, rye or lower, around like 78% corn or so. I think this is a blend of uh, uh, eight years and higher, I think like 10 and 12 are the other blends that are thrown in there. But um, uh, stylistically, uh, this is gonna be very different than the two Sazerac brands we have in front of us. Uh, and uh, it's one of the things I love so much about Wild Turkey is that even though the law allows us, or allows them to distill up to 165, they'll do it much, much lower, uh, below 120 usually. Um, even though the law allows them to put it in the barrel at 135, these go into the barrel, uh, as far as I know, the barrel entry proof sits below 120 consistently, uh, which leads to a lower barrel exit proof, even though they have 17 story brick houses, they aim for that lower, barrel exit proof. And so this comes to us at 116. And um, I know this like, just like the uh, Russell's Reserve, which is more, uh, I, I believe, uh, of, of Eddie's project. Um, uh, rare breed um, uh, is, is going in that like honey spot, they call it, where they'll, they'll distill it right around where they'll barrel it right around where they'll bottle it. And I love that about it. So this leads to a little bit more grain focused uh, end product, even though it's got those like high vanilla and high tannic qualities that come from the barrel as, as a barrel proof product. So when I smell this, I am not, I am not overwhelmed um, by the 116.8 on here. I am not. You definitely smell the oak coming through very much, but I'm also smelling corn. And that's what I love, I think, about this product so much is that it, it uh, keeps those um, the qualities of the grain that were meant to be present when the first laws about bourbon were written in the 1890s. On the palate, take those slow sips. <laughs> uh, let your saliva water down or just add some drops of water if you want, uh, but do not take a big sip of it and expect to be able to taste all of these cast strength products we're about to taste. So small sips, and uh, right away I get frosted flakes. You get the corn flakes, and you get the sugar sweetness, but you definitely get both. Um, Jimmy Russell was definitely, I think, a man who um, uh, was in that generation that didn't trust old bourbon, and you, you get, uh, I think, that philosophy coming through in this product. Why do you not trust old bourbon? And I think it's generally because you're covering up distillation flaws here. I think their skill and distillation and aging are both met. Okay, now we move on to the two Sazerac products. Both of these are, are um, well sought after, they're well thought of. This one is new, even though it's uh, been released in Japan before. So this is the first release in, in North America um, as, as a barrel proof straight from the barrel Blanton's. Um, George C. Sag and, and Blanton's are from two separate mash bills from Buffalo Trace. Mash bill number one, uh, mash bill number two. Um, and uh, let's let's see what, what sort of differences they are producing. Uh, one of the reasons I, I wanted to do these two side by side, 116.8 proof, 116.9 proof as a 20, uh, 20 uh, barrel proof release of a stag line. This is going to be the same line of uh, Buffalo Trace in here. Benchmark. Ooh, and when I smell it, I'm instantly getting like, 
red fruit. I'm getting like cherry chapstick red fruit. So, uh, so fun, so unique in there. When I taste it, it almost gets the, almost gets me like maraschino. Like it almost tastes like uh, cherries that have like flambe cherry desserts that have just been like caramelized and, and burnt. And that's that oak, but also the yeast. So Buffalo Trace is famous for the yeast that produces cherry notes and I can never get past it in, in a good way. Yeah, that is, uh, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's one of the lower proofed expressions of it that's come out in the past few years. Um, there's been George Cheese Tags recently that have come up to 140 proof, uh, what we call hazmat territory. Uh, this is a nice gentle expression. So here now we actually are gonna uh, jump all the way up to 130.3 proof. Um, I did only get one bottle of this and probably it's the only bottle I would get this year. I was very excited to share it with you. Thank you for being part of the club. This is uh, Warehouse H, Rec 35, Barrel 153, Bottle 76. This was dumped on September 29th of 2020. So what I'm tasting here is much more rich. A very, very beautiful, rich, full flavored, slow sipping expression uh, here. You have the prototypical grenade shaped single malt scotch style decanter that was designed in the 80s to imitate that and make bourbon seem more premium than it was. But this is as premium as it gets uh, for bourbon for me. This one, the Smashville, uh, much more stone fruit forward to me even though it's got the same yeast, um, I get more uh, peach cobbler uh, with a crumble and all, brown sugar, uh, stone fruit. Um, uh, just a, um, exactly what you want from a cask strength bourbon, especially at a Buffalo Trace. Uh, for me, this hits a pinnacle uh, of the last year for Buffalo Trace for me. This is unbelievably simple for what George C. Sag is. Uh, and this is, I think, a great expression of old school high proof bourbon. Okay, last but not least, we're going to do our cask strength, cask finish, uh, Bell Mead uh, from Nelson's Green Bright Distiller in Nashville. Um, if you've been following us on Instagram at all and you saw that on I IGTV, we have an interview with Charlie Nelson, the CEO and namesake of this distillery. Um, you see that we have tasted these already. If you want more in depth tasting, with uh, the guy who owns it himself. Uh, feel free to go to our Instagram, check that out. You'll see us tasting it together and it's wonderful. But I wanna go, go through it with you here uh, because uh, there's a very amazing uniqueness about this. All three of these, MGP. So if you're not a bourbon nerd, MGP, uh, formerly LDI, uh, is the massive distillery in Indiana that sources bourbon for so many brands. Um, Nelson Screenbrier was one of the first to disclose um, that it started it up, but this Tennessee whiskey, uh, even though it was defunct for quite a few decades in the 1800s, was seven times the size of Jack Daniels. Um, uh, Charlie Nelson uh, rediscovered that he had an old distillery in his family's lineage, raised the money, started it up using MGP juice. Now he's making his own juice and it's really delicious, but this stuff is all MGP, uh, starting off right around eight to nine years old, then finished for four to six months. However long it's gonna to take to make these uh, cask finishes really actually come through. And I think all of them are unique and beautiful. So let's just taste through them uh, with two pretty standard ones, followed by a unique project that is kind of cult followed in Nashville. We just happen to have here, consider this a gift because I can't actually legally sell it to you. This is just, uh, I think a really fun, beautiful way of trying uh, these uh, beautiful casks. So Oloroso sherry cask, uh, if you're not familiar with the different types of uh, sherry, 
um, Oloroso is going to be one of the most raisinated expressions out there. So uh, as we're smelling this, remember again, cask strength. This comes in uh, right at uh, 59%, just higher than that. So 118 proof. So when I smell it, I get must. I get must like the inside of a ship. Followed by raisinets, chocolate covered raisins. And those two things to me is exactly what I look for in sherry. I want aged sherry and bourbon that touches it to have that sort of dusty, funky raisinette. Like if I brought a flask of old bourbon to a movie theater and accidentally spilled it, uh, spilled my raisinettes in my glass. And that is, that is what I want it to taste like. The smell I can taste like. So we, we, we had just tried, if you went in order with us, the cask strengths from uh, Wild Turkey and Buffalo Trace. Here with MGP juice. This is uh, gonna give you more of the Kentucky hug, even though these are from Tennessee slash Indiana, and those are from uh, Kentucky. These are gonna be, uh, you're gonna feel the proof on here. Maybe a little bit more. But man, that is a full flavor. That is a, a very, very nice. I think uh, we are we are getting the oak sugar in here, which I think is, is going to be um, sweeter, but also just a more rich, more robust flavor. Here, uh, when we're using a Madeira cask, uh, if you're not familiar with, with the process of Madeira, instead of oxidizing something into stability, uh, we are going to matterize it. So we're using bacteria, essentially, to create a uh, shelf-stable product and that can uh, uh, taste wildly different one thing to another. And here, what I'm going to smell is more, uh, uh, less raisins, more prunes, more, maybe more stone fruit. I get apricot. I think it's some bright red fruit. Ooh, when I taste that, it tastes even dustier than the sherry. Oh, but it gives way to dried fruit leather. That is really nice. It gets a little bit of seaweed quality in there, which is really nice. A little umami, very beautiful. Uh, moving on to the Black Bell. This is a project that they do with um, a local distillery in Nashville using stout casks. Um, they don't sell it outside the distillery, uh, which is again why this is a gift, not a sold product. Um, but this comes in 110 proof. When I smell. I get coffee and toffee right away. Although this is a little, a little bit less pronounced on the nose. This makes you stop when you put it on your tongue. It makes you stop, let it sit. Because the notes here that come through are going to be rich and velvety. Oh, it's very, it's very uh, dark, dark chocolate. Like uh, cacao nibs um, and coffee and, and, and the beer really comes through well. Um, so this is the, very intense, the things that will punch you right in the face and then give you a big embrace. This is the, um, uh, the ones to finish with. So I hope you're not watching this in reverse order because these are absolutely the ones to finish with. Your palate at this point might be wrecked like mine is, uh, but it is a beautiful wreck. Um, I hope you've enjoyed these. If you have any questions about any of these uh, that we've tasted, feel free to reach out. Google them if you want, but uh, we are happy to answer any questions about why we selected them about what we're actually offering, um, but it is absolutely a pleasure to be tasting these with you. Hope you've enjoyed them as much as I have. Cheers.